Hello and welcome to the Ilanga Yogi Podcast. My name is Kate and I'm a yoga teacher all the way from Iloilo, Philippines, hence the name Ilanga Yogi. I share content on yoga, mindfulness, mental health, fitness, and self-care. This is my first time trying this actually and it's been a dream of mine to start a podcast so I figured I'd do it on my YouTube channel for now and maybe eventually I'll find a home through other streaming avenues. We'll see. So for now, to start, I want us to ground and center ourselves, which is something we'll always do at the beginning of each episode. So if you'd like to join me, just find a comfortable position wherever you may be, as long as you're not driving, and roll the shoulders back and down. Try to sit up tall without straining your back in any way or your hips or your belly in any way, and just relax the feet, the legs, relax around your neck, jaw, the face, all the way up to the forehead. And let's start with three deep cleansing breaths. So take an inhale through your nose and just sigh it out through the mouth. (sighs) Again, a big breath in and let it all go. (sighs) One more time, inhale and exhale. Slowly close your eyes if you'd like to. If you're not comfortable with this, you can always just gaze down towards the floor, anywhere that you can still focus on. And as you're here, feel your hands resting on your knees or wherever they may be. If you're lying down, then they're by your side. And I want you to start to notice where you are. Just observe where you are at this very moment. You may be in a quiet place or maybe you're in a busy place. And so wherever you are, just notice the activity around you. Notice the sounds, the noises around you. And observe how it feels to be in this space right now. Begin to feel the feet here, whether they're flat or they're just at ease, relaxing. And then make your way up towards the knees. Relax around your thighs and hips. And feel your sits bones on the floor or on the chair. Can you relax around your pelvis and allow the entire lower body to rest here, to basically be heavy, grounding you down, rooting you down into the earth? Now bring your awareness to the spine, lengthening your spine in a comfortable way still, all the way up to the neck. Relax around your shoulders and elbows, down to the hands and fingers. Can you allow your arms to be heavy here so the shoulders can drop away from your ears? And then relax around your heart space, around the lungs and ribs. Soften around the belly. And now bring your awareness to the entire torso finding a way to keep the torso long and upright, but still at ease here. Now bring your awareness towards the head. Relax around the crown of your head and forehead, around the eyes, nose. Can you soften around the cheeks, the chin and the jaw, even around the teeth, and tongue. Begin to notice how you're breathing here and can you keep your breath slow, deep, yet full, breathing in through your nose and breathing out through the nose. Breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the nose. If you're new to this way of breathing, give yourself time to explore this breath. 
And if it helps, you can always rest one hand on your belly. And as you breathe in, try to breathe all the way down towards the belly. It should feel like your belly is rising and expanding like a balloon. And as you exhale, try to draw the belly in, relax the shoulders as you release the air. Inhale, the belly expands, the lungs expand. And as you exhale, relax the upper body, slowly drawing the navel in. Breathe in to inflate and breathe out to deflate. Inhale, filling up the belly and lungs and exhale, relaxing here. Continue this breath. And notice that the movement mainly happens around the belly area and lungs, less in the shoulders. And if you feel that your shoulders and upper chest are still moving, can you find a way to direct your breath all the way down to the base of the torso? Just give yourself more time to explore this breath. Continue inhaling and exhaling. Now with this breath moving and flowing through your body, begin to notice other things in the body such as how you're feeling physically, mentally, and emotionally today. It may help to ask yourself questions like, how are your energy levels today? How is your mood today? And what are some patterns of thoughts that you've been having lately? There's no need to answer this right away. Kind of marinate in these questions for a little bit. And you yourself will begin to know the answers as they just kind of arise and come to the surface. Just a few more breaths here. Now that you're aware of your body, your mind, your heart, and your breath, allow this feeling of groundedness and peace to stay with you for as long as possible throughout the rest of your day, wherever you go next, whatever you do next. Take your last five breaths here. Take a breath in and a breath out. Begin to open your eyes, coming back into this space. And hello there once again. How are you? I hope you're feeling a little better after that guided meditation. And wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you healing and loving energy, especially if you find that you're really needing it right now. I hope today's episode makes you feel less alone and inspires you to live a happier and more balanced life. Today, I'll be talking about sabotaging relationships. Sabotaging relationships could be pushing away those you love, acting out in an immature or destructive way, or building walls around yourself so you never really connect deeply with your friends, partner, or relatives. I once was a saboteur way before I began my healing journey. And when I was in the midst of my bipolar illness, I built walls around me because I was so scared of loving and losing. 
I was afraid of being hurt by people I love or seeing them leave me. I was afraid of any sort of relationship, so I isolated myself. I sabotaged friendships and family. I burned bridges. But in the end, that only made me feel more alone and less loved. So if you feel the same way right now or have ever felt this, keep listening. A lot of us have been hurt in childhood in some way, and maybe you felt abandoned. Maybe you were abused verbally or emotionally. Maybe you were ignored. And as we become adults, a lot of these issues and traumas are unprocessed, and they resurface in how we behave in different relationships, in how we act, how we think, and how we feel. So why do we sabotage relationships? A lot of it stems from our childhood traumas. And when a person comes in and mirrors another person, let's say in your past, who has hurt you, I believe that it triggers us emotionally and as a form of defense, cutting them out seems like the only reasonable solution at that exact moment. Or if a relationship mirrors a past relationship you had that caused insurmountable pain, which you have not made peace with yet, then again, the solution that makes sense is to run away. And sometimes when a relationship is good and happy, the fear of that being taken away or broken because we've never experienced a happy and healthy relationship in the past, or the fear of being abandoned because you were abandoned so many times before, or the fear of being hurt because you've been hurt over and over again that makes you push away people you love. Sometimes we act out or completely shut out those we love the most and all because we are so afraid. We are so afraid that we never allow ourselves to forgive or open up to relationships. If this is you, again, I hear you, I feel you, I see you because I know exactly how it feels. The thing is, relationships are imperfect and this is something that I've learned. Yes, in some cases, cutting people out who are very toxic is necessary. But that only goes for those who are actually abusive or who take advantage of you in any way. If we do this in all our relationships, I'm here to tell you it's a one-way street to loneliness. You will never be genuinely happy or whole in your life. So how do we change this? For one, we need to dig deep and make peace with the root of it all. Ask yourself, why do you sabotage relationships? And keep asking why after every answer until you get to the root of it all. You can do this through journaling or with the help of a professional such as a therapist until you can't ask why anymore and give yourself enough time and space to be able to work through years of trauma and pain. These things take time. Second, find a way to forgive and let go. It could be through little rituals, like writing a letter and burning it. It could be through therapy, processing the trauma you've experienced, or journaling, which is something that I do a lot. Visualizing through meditation as if you're speaking to whoever has hurt you, saying everything you wish you could say. Anything works, but find a way to cleanse yourself of that hurt and pain, and again, Do it for as long as this takes. It does take a while, but that's okay. Be patient with yourself. Third, forgive yourself, which is very, very important. Mend your own relationship with yourself. This may take time once again, much like everything that I've just mentioned, and a lot of practice too. It's a journey in itself, really, but through self-care and self-love, even if that may sound cheesy, you'll realize you deserve to be loved, you are worthy of happiness and healthy relationships, and it's okay to be vulnerable. Fourth, once you've cultivated unconditional love for yourself, it'll be so much easier to attract healthier and happier relationships in your life, and it'll make it easier to walk away from toxic relationships too. I feel like this is the secret to the life of your dreams, really. You attract what you put out into the world. The way you love yourself and others is the same way others will treat you and see you. So be kind and loving to yourself first, and it becomes easier to cultivate kind and loving relationships in your life. 
I'll say that one more time, just so that we really understand it. It's also a nice reminder for myself too. Be kind and loving to yourself first, and it becomes easier to cultivate kind and loving relationships in your life. As we go through life, we will encounter different people, different relationships. Sometimes our family relationship is really messy and ugly. Sometimes we meet friends who use us and take advantage of us, or we get into troubled, toxic, romantic relationships too. I've always told myself, we are sent these relationships to teach us how to love ourselves better, how to grow and learn and become a higher version of ourselves with a purpose. This is what has helped me find my own purpose. But most importantly, this teaches us how to cultivate unconditional love, which is the most beautiful form of love, really. A love that is so patient, authentic, courageous, and inspiring. A love that not everyone is capable of giving or receiving. It's a very special kind of love, and I do believe that we all deserve to feel it and to be able to experience it in our life. And if you're listening to this, you're capable of unconditional love. You are capable of unconditional love. It is real. You are worthy of love, of joy, of the best that life can offer. And you have to believe that first. Love yourself first, and the rest will follow. I hope this has been enlightening for you in some way. And if you'd like more, subscribe to my channel, follow me on social media at Ilonga Yogi. May you live today grateful and fulfilled. Thank you so much for listening.